It is easier to see the trend on a chart after it has occurred. Trying to identify the trend as it is developing is much more difficult. This monthly chart shows a sustained uptrend, but there is a slowing down toward the end. Will the upward trend continue? Will prices begin a downward trend? Or will they move sideways? The purpose of technical analysis is to apply tools that provide the best chance of identifying the future direction of prices. If wrong, these tools can also control the size of your loss. So it's imperative you don't overcomplicate your analysis with useless data or indicators that don't add value to your charts. Today we'll talk about trends, trend lines and price action and I'll show you the easiest way to analyze a chart to have a better understanding of what is really happening on it. Before we continue, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell and leave a like to show your support. First of all, the time interval is a key element when identifying a trend. Forget about the 15 minute or the 5 minute charts and go on the daily chart. Weekly or monthly charts show the major trends even more clearly than daily charts. Longer term charts remove a large part of the noise that interferes with seeing the bigger picture. The most successful traders and investors start by evaluating a weekly or a monthly chart and then apply the lines and values developed on those charts to a daily chart. The weekly chart provides direction, while the daily chart or even the 4 hour on the hourly charts are used for timing entries and exits. In order to successfully determine a trend, you must master the trend lines. Trend line analysis is often underestimated by traders because it is perceived as being subjective. A trend line determines the current direction of price movement and often identifies the specific point at which that direction will change. I would say that the trend line is the most popular and recognized tool of chart analysis. Now, how to draw trend lines? In an uptrend, you look to connect the lows of the price. In a downtrend, you connect the highs of the price. A valid trend line connects two or more points that define the trend. As I said before, you start drawing trend lines on higher time frames and then carrying them forward to shorter time frames. In this way, you identify the areas of support and resistance, the most significant levels being on the higher time frames. An uptrend line has a positive slope and acts as support. As long as the market price remains above this trend line, the uptrend is considered intact. A close of the price below the uptrend line is suggesting that a change in trend could be on the cards. A downtrend line has a negative slope and acts as resistance. As long as the price remains below this trend line, the downtrend is considered valid. A close of the price above the downtrend line suggests that a change in trend might happen. So here is a classic downwards trend line. It connects the highest price with other price swings. When price moves through the trend line heading higher, the downtrend has been penetrated. This may end the downtrend or cause a new downtrend line to be drawn. In this case, it was the end of the downtrend. The trend lines are basically support and resistance lines. An upwards trend line drawn across the lows is a bullish support line because it defines the lowest price allowed in order to maintain the upwards trend. The downward trend line drawn across the highs is a bearish resistance line. Proper use of these basic lines is essential for identifying the overall direction of the market and understanding the patterns formed as the price moves from one level to another. But how do you know the relevance of a trend line? I personally have three concepts I look at a trend line. Its length, its number of retests and its ascending or descending slope. So the length of the trend line is an important factor. A 3 or 4 weeks trend is of minor importance if the trend lasts for 1 or 2 years for example. A break below or above a trend line with an important length represents an important signal. Also, a trend line is more important if it has been retested many times. 
that's why a trend line acts like a dynamic area of support or resistance. Each line retest contributes to the importance of support and resistance. Extending the trend line after a breakout is very important because its role of dynamic support or resistance will reverse. This means that if an uptrend line retested several times in the past is broken to the downside, it will become a resistance area. Also, if a downtrend line retested several times in the past is broken to the upside, will become a support area. In what concerns this slope, a very steep trend is difficult to be maintained and is therefore likely to be easily broken, even by short lateral movements. All the trend lines are eventually broken, but the steepest trend lines are the soonest broken. Usually from my experience, a breakout of a trend line with a steep slope is more likely followed by a trend continuation than a reversal. A steep trend line is the result of an accelerated increase or decrease in the short term. In this case, the trend line will have a higher angle and is less likely to provide solid support or resistance. Now, once the support and resistance lines have been drawn, a price penetration of those lines creates the basic trend signal. I prefer to add the additional rule that once the price has penetrated a trend line, it must remain penetrated for some time in order to confirm the new trend, because most false penetrations correct quickly. In actual trading, the price crossing the trend line is not 100% clean. Most often, the prices that have been moving higher will cross below the trend line, then we cross moving higher, then move lower again. The trend line is an important turning point and there may be indecision that is reflected in sideways price movement before prices re-establish a trend. To deal with this situation, you could do one of the following. Wait a set time period to confirm that prices remain on the new side of the trend line or wait for a reversal after the penetration and then enter a trade in the new direction or create a small safety zone namely a bend or a channel around the trend line and enter the new trade if the prices move through the trend line and through the safety zone. Each of these techniques require a delay before entering. A delay normally benefits the trader by giving a better entry price. However, if prices fall quickly through an upwards trend line and don't reverse or slow down, then any delay will result in a much worse entry price or no entry at all. Unfortunately, most of the biggest moves result from breakouts that never pull back. That's the reality. I know you want the textbook breakout with the price retesting the breakout level, but in some cases the price just keeps going and never reaches the breakout area. Now, to get a better understanding of the trend, you could create a channel with trend lines. A channel is formed by a trend line and another line draw parallel to the trend line, enclosing a sustained price move. The goal of a channel is to define the volatility of the price move and establish reasonable entry and exit points. Up to now, the trend line has only been used to identify the major price direction. A long position is entered when the price crosses a downward trend line moving higher. The trade is held until the price moves below the upwards trend line. However, it is more common to have a series of shorter trades, while the biggest profits come from holding one position throughout a sustained trend, a series of shorter trades is also a viable alternative if you are an active trader. Just be aware that trend lines using very little data are essentially analyzing noise and have limited value. So before a channel can be formed, a bullish or bearish trend line must be drawn. A clear uptrend line requires at least two or more major low points on a chart. These points 
don't have to fall exactly on the line. Once the trend line is drawn, the highest high can be used to draw another line parallel to the upwards trend line. The area between the two parallel lines is the channel. In theory, trading a channel is a simple process. We buy as prices approach the support line, in this case the upwards trend line, and we sell as prices are near the resistance line. These buy and sell zones should be around the bottom and top 10 or 15% of the channel. If prices continue through the lower trend line after a long position has been set, the trade must be closed. In a downward trending channel, it is best to sell short in the upper zone and cover the short in the lower zone. Buying in the lower zone is not recommended. Your trades are much safer when they are entered in the direction of the trend. Remember, trend following is the most profitable and consistent trading style. Now, the reality is that no one knows how high or how low a market will go. No one knows when a market will move. But we can follow a trend to increase our chances to profit from the markets. If you enjoyed this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and leave a like to show your support. Until next time.